Again, he was arraigned in that building, historic building you see right there where history is made today. 34 counts of felony charges of falsifying business records in the first degree. Back here in the studio, CBS2 political reporter Marsha Kramer joining us now to, to break it all down. And, and just so much has happened, including uh, the former president after being now a an official criminal defendant reaching out, reaching out to people. Well, he was reaching out to people for money, Dana. I went back to my office after the last uh, show, after 5 o'clock show, and I was astonished to find out that in my inbox were no fewer than six requests for fundraising from Trump and Mr. Trump. And the thing that was amazing is, from the plane, mm -hmm. it was he t took off, what would he say, 441? Ten minutes after he took off, I got an email in my inbox asking for money, saying I'm I'm flying back to Mar-a-Lago. I need you to contribute. But it's not only contributions. He's also selling T-shirts which say not guilty. So I got fundraising requests from Make America Great Again, from uh, the Donald Trump campaign, from Trump uh, 2024, uh, five different fund fundraising requests in the last two hours. And, and fair to say, not surprised, Marcia, since not since surprised. the indictment on Thursday, millions of dollars, possibly uh, we have learned more than seven today that's what the campaign is saying total seven million dollars I think it's more than that now I mean he said he raised four million dollars in the first 24 hours after the indictment was announced so you know I mean he's trying to make political hay and I guess he's going to try to make more political hay tonight when he gives a speech when he gets on the ground at Mar-a-Lago we understand the plane is as close to Palm Beach International Airport and he should land in about the next uh, half hour um, his defense attorney is talking about uh, a vigorous defense and we heard them say uh, Joe Tacopina for instance there are no facts in the indictment what about this? What about venue? Well, what well, about? Well, first of all, I think that you know they're going to make they're going to ask that the indictment be um, they be, the venue? be be, be uh, eliminated. Just they're going to ask for a change of venue. They're going to ask for a whole bunch of different things. But one thing I can tell you is this: number one, Alvin Bragg made it really clear no change of venue. He said today, "quote He's going to be tried in a court in downtown Manhattan." We also should talk about the potential witnesses because there are witnesses that are close to Trump that mm -hmm. have testified before the grand jury including Hope Hicks who's very close to him Kellyanne Conway who was his campaign manager during the final months of the campaign in 2016 where the payments were made and also several members of the Trump um, organization who testified before the grand jury including the controller of the Trump organization and the woman who's in charge of accounts receivable but here's the thing we read the indictment and what it says is quite simply that they have found that Donald Trump and the Trump Organization signed, a, there were 11 checks that were paid to Michael Cohen from the Donald J. Trump Revocable Trust, which is the trust that was set up to hold his assets when he became president, and from Trump bank accounts. But here's the smoking gun. They say that Donald Trump signed, personally signed, nine of the checks. That's really a key smoking gun. Right. Marsha, thanks for joining us here. And all day we were on uh, the uh, former president's next court appearance, at least before that judge uh, December 4th, so much can happen in between then and now eight months away. See you soon. <laughs>